put the needle on the record, 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 till the drum beats go like this. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 82 of Prog Review, and this time around, I'm talking about UK by UK. UK, what a strange prog supergroup you turned out to be. You're neither fish nor fowl, neither bird nor beast. What unique conglomeration of progness are you? So here we have the UK LP vinyl. There's Brufy, there's Whitney, there's Jobby and there's Holdsworthy. And um, yeah, and that's got to be the cheapest logo in existence. It's a real bargain bin at Woolworths type logo, don't you agree? And um, there we go again. You can see who's on it. Let's excuse the stains. They feel like that when I bought it second hand. Um, you know, I like to keep the stains. It gives it a character. Uh, so there we go. Polydor. Who remembers them? And as you can see, it's a lovely, yeah. Uh, there's a lovely aerial view of the UK from the old satellite. And it was produced by UK for EG Records, remember them? In 1978. Oh look, got the original in the sleeves, that's nice. As you can see, just replicates the uh, the album cover. But this time you've got their names written down so we know exactly who they are. And there's uh, the track listing with the credits. As you can see, there's this lovely... I don't know UK type blocky thing cubist would you call that cubist possibly so there you go record between 777 and January 78 it was a pretty quick real turnaround and um, yeah so there you go. let's have a look at the old uh, the old vinyl itself eh? let's see a lovely little logo there on the, on the label and the same on that side and the uh, yeah, the vinyl's in pretty good nick. A little bit of um, crack on the B side. Um, but overall, it's, it, I must admit, it sounded quite good. Anyway, enough of this rubbish. Let's put the whole thing back in its sleeves and we'll carry on with the review like a good boy should. There you go. Rising from the failed Bruford Wakeman Wetton trio that was. <laughs> squashed by Wakeman's management and record company, a and and coming a year after Bruford's first solo album, uh, Feels Good To Me. This is indeed a strange melange of styles. It's part rock, little dash of prog, but a healthy dollop of jazz fusion. Ugh, jazz fusion, oh, scary stuff. The first side features a song that's actually divided into three parts called In the Dead of the Night. Though actually, if you look at the the, the credits list, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't. I think on the CD they've got it down as three separate songs, but they're all sieged into one. You know, it's all joined, it's one big piece of song. Uh, it's called In the Dead of the Night, which starts off with a thudding drum and bass parts before the familiar squawk of wetton joins the mix from the off you don't hear much of the a crimson dna in this recording despite there being like king crimson's best rhythm section but it does tend to owe a lot from that first bruford album that's what that's what i'm i'm getting you know hearing it on vinyl again after all those years musically we are deep into jazz a fusion territory with a a little touch of of pop sensibility there are phrasings that wouldn't be amiss on an asia album no no seriously just bear with me but it you know it, it could actually be more to do with the way um you know wet and styles his vocal warblings than anything else in the dead of the night leads into by the light of the day can you see what they've done there can you see and st steps forward eddie the wanker Jobson, I'll explain about that. And he flavours the mix with his little fiddle 
and fiddling with his synths and I felt my mind wandering off until some great Bruford drumming woke me from the malaise and um, then it all gets a bit widdly widdly you know very deliberate you know and we head further down the jazz fusion road it sounds a bit like Brand X in places but without that band's good humour then the band reprises it's called Presto Vivace and Reprise uh, and they go through the beginning of the song again you know in the dead of the night it's basically replayed um, so you actually have a song that's kind of been split down the middle and packed with a load of filler is that a bit cruel of me do you think do you think I'm being a bit rotten there but I remember nodding my head in appreciation to it 23 years ago and thinking it was you know the best thing ever and then you know listening to it again uh, you know, I feel that despite having a few uplifting moments, I can't help thinking that the whole thing is a little bit overwrought and unnecessary in places. They could have done with a good producer there editing them down. But hey, it's produced by UK. Mm. The seal of approval. Uh, and the sign of a quality product built in the UK. Uh, side one is rounded off by... A personal favourite from my memory in the shape of 30 years and if again my befuddled memory serves me correctly it did have a certain crimson flavour to it and opens with some mellow synth bedding and some sensitive acoustic playing from Alan Holdsworth before Wetton opens his mouth again well, then we zip off with some more great synth playing and back into that jazz fusion groove again um, then we hit a great section that you know, really does sound very crimson. You know, if if you know if crimson made it to 1978 and adopted a more you know jazz fusion style, I'm just going to stop there because my battery light's flashing because I've just remembered that I haven't changed it. So I'm just going to pause whilst I quickly put my energizer replacement battery in see what thought of everything so just bear with me there will be a fade out and we're back sorry about that very unprofessional of me um i think we're on the second side i could have just done a careful fade couldn't i so yeah we flipped the record over because i am listening to this on vinyl and the B side opens with Alaska. There's a joke in there somewhere. My wife. A joke, you know. Is your wife going on holiday? Alaska? No, Alaska myself. Shouldn't have bothered. Anyway, this one was penned by um, Jobson and it features suitably glacial synth soundscapes before the band crashes in. Blammo. And we're in for some more limping jazz chops. And actually, part of this reminds me of ELP's Tarkus. I shit you not. It really, there was bits of it rhythmically or um, the, some of the melody, melody there was, you know, just remind me, doodly doodly doodly, you know, you know Tarkus. We all know Tarkus. 5.1's coming out in July. Yeah, 5.1. I'll be getting it and reviewing it. But anyway, yeah, it, 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 it kind of caught me out, you know. But, you know, the track's okay. Um, but the only thing is it did lack a certain level of um, detail that, you know, you come to expect from this kind of music. It, it felt like it needed another layer, like, you know, needed some, a solo or something. It just felt like something was missing, but... And then this is followed by Time to Kill. And although it's not credited on the album, it sounds like, because the two tracks kind of sing together, it sounds like it's the second part of Alaska. But this time, you know, you've got more words sung by Wetton. And it's, it's pretty uninspiring stuff. 
but there's an instrumental break filled with more odd time signatures, violin solos and that chugging rhythm that seems to have dominated the whole album. And we veer from pop to jazz again in one song. You know, it's a brave tactic, but I'm not sure it really works. I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, they get some you know, good pop stuff going, you know, and then it all goes a bit... So, I don't know. Nevermore begins with more solo guitar from Holdsworth before some real lounge jazz playing begins and Witten once more starts warbling. Now is it me or or is it or just does Wetton sound more tuneless than usual on this record? You know, I mean I I was I thought are my ears on wrong and I know they're experimenting with, you know, like interesting vocal harmonies, but I think um it's a little bit too eccentric for my sensitive lug holes. So, you know, a bit of a stinker. The album then concludes with Mental Medication, which made me want to pick up the disc and smash it across my knee. Now, I knew there was a reason that, you know, back in, back in the good old days when I was young, that I only ever listened to the first side of the album. You know, when I was a, when I was a callow youth, it would be side one and then... Off for a bit of uh, you know in and out with the with the misses. I mean you know the music you know is okay if a little schizophrenic in places, but Wetton's tuneless vocalising and his execrable lyrics really do piss in my cornflakes, to put it politely. The jazz light stuff on the track is nice enough and it does sound like an offcut from Bruford's solo albums of that time so it's kind of a good thing going but I'm really having trouble with Wetton's vocals and his lyrics they're just well the lyrics are puerile and the vocals are just you know did he did he record them separately to a different track and they try to meld them together because it sounds like he's not singing with the same band he's hearing something different When I used to listen to it, you know, I, I, all those years ago, I really did actually listen to the first side. And you know, I'm going to make myself unpopular in, with much of the prog community when I say that this is a bit of an overrated album. You know, it's a bit of a turkey. You, know, you can see the beak on it. I think I would have liked it more if it had been a straight jazz fusion album. You know, a bit like the Bruford and the Brand X, and you know what I mentioned before, but. You know, Wetton is an appalling vocalist at the best of times. No, come on, let's let's be honest now. He he's not Frank Sinatra, is he? He's um, I don't know. He's comes from a lot of the time. He sounds like he's got a sock in his mouth. You know, I mean that suited King Crimson though, because his unintelligible singing actually you know seemed to fit with the music. Ugly music, ugly vocals. It works, but you know. He all sings like a Does that sound that's a that's a rough approximation, isn't it? And you know, on this UK album his bad singing is, you know, it's a very apparent. So that's why I'm gonna give this recording, this album, this slab of vinyl, this C D, this MP3 download, this illegal torrent, an anemic two CS8 is out of five that's two CS8 is out of five now I'm going to retire to a safe distance and put on some Bruford and then some Brand X to you know to clean my polluted lug holes out just don't send me any hate mail anyway my name's been Darren Lock. I've been burbling on about UK's debut self-titled album UK You've been a patient audience for watching and listening to all this nonsense. Uh, thumbs up. Thumbs down. Subscribe. Unsubscribe. Do what you've got to do. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. Um, social media. Tickle my Twitter. Sit on my Facebook. And that's it. I have one more thing to say. Two thumbs. Provence.